Here's the notes for Across the Park, often uh, T2 Day 30. So this is an interesting application of our Max Men's, a little bit uh, challenging and um, I think kind of fun. So we've got, um, Alana has seven minutes until a bus leaves. The bus stop is across a grassy park. So she's right here, maybe coming out of her dorm and needing to get to, um, to a bus stop. And she needs to get there across this grassy field that's 2,000, the bus stop is 2,000 feet to the east and 600 feet south of her current position. Uh, two ways she can get there. She can either walk along the sidewalk all the way across this here at the sidewalk, down this sidewalk, and then back to the bus stop. Um, and if she does that, uh, she can walk along the sidewalk at the edge of the park, and her speed there is six feet per second. She can also choose to travel through the grass of the park. So if she goes across here, she can only walk at four feet per second. So the, it's wet grass, it's muddy. Um, the problem says the park is a favorite place for a dog walk, so she must move with care. And what path will get her to the bus stop the fastest? And will she be in time? Okay, so she has seven minutes to catch her bus. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at all of our options, our extremes, and then see if we can apply what we know about maximizing. So first of all, let's remember that rate times time equals distance. So we can say our time, which is what we're looking for, is going to be our distance over our rate. So if she just stays on the sidewalk, how long is it going to take her? So if she's on the sidewalk, she's going to have a distance of this 2,000 feet plus this 300 feet plus this 600 feet plus this 300 feet back to where the bus stop is. That'll be your total distance divided by her rate, which we're told if she's on the sidewalk is six feet per second. So we add those up and we get 3,200 divided by six, which is 533 and a third seconds. And we want to know what that is in minutes because she's got eight minutes to catch her bus. So we'll say, all right, well, 533 and a third seconds times and our equivalence factor there that's going to get us to minutes is that 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. And when we do that multiplication, we get 8.89 minutes. So if she wants to just stay on the sidewalk, she's got to allow herself almost nine minutes to get there. 8.89 minutes is what it's going to take her to stay on the sidewalk. So she misses the bus if she just stays on the sidewalk walking at that rate. So what if, instead of being on the sidewalk, if she just goes on the grass? So she comes out her door and she cuts straight across the park just on the grass. Well, if she goes on the grass, we've got, we've got a triangle here where this distance is 2,000, this distance is 600, and it's a right triangle, so her distance across the park, we'll call that small letter d, is going to be that distance squared equals the 2,000 squared plus the 600 squared, or d equals 2,088.06 feet, keeping a couple of decimal places there. So her total distance, 2088.06, divided by her rate, which was given at four feet per second, gives us 522 seconds. Well, that's better than that 533. Is it good enough? Well, let's multiply by that factor to get it into minutes again. 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So 522 divided by 60, 
gives us 8.7 minutes. So again, faster than walking on the sidewalk, but not fast enough. She's going to miss the bus. So again, she should have allowed herself about nine minutes. So let's, let's figure out what could be her shortest route. So we're going to say if she were to walk partway on the sidewalk and then cut across the park at some point, maybe her total time could be expressed as her total time could be her time on the sidewalk plus their time on the grass. Okay, so we don't know just where it is that she's gonna cut across, but that's what we're gonna try. And, and if we minimize the time, that can tell us where she should cut across the park for the minimum amount of time. So we're going to have a distance over rate here for her time on the sidewalk and another distance over rate for her time on the grass. So her distance on the sidewalk well, if this entire distance from here to here is 2,000 feet, it makes sense that at some point she'll cut over. It could be that she cuts immediately over. Maybe that's her shortest path, shortest time path. Or it could be that she comes all the way over here and then cuts down. But it wouldn't make sense for her to go any farther beyond and then come back. So I'm going to say that the amount that she walks is this 2,000 minus some x distance. So I'm going to call this distance x. So her distance on the sidewalk is 2,000 minus that x amount. And her rate, because she's on the sidewalk, is that 6 feet per second. And then her distance on the grass, well, I'm going to switch colors here so you can see this triangle that I'm looking at. Her distance on the grass is this distance. And we now have a triangle again where my x is one side of the triangle and the other side of the triangle is 600. And I'm now looking for another diameter. So I'm going to, not diameter, another distance that is a hypotenuse. Um, so if I want that distance, I'm going to have x squared plus 600 squared is going to equal that distance squared. Or d equals the square root of x squared plus 600 squared. So let's use that the square root of x squared plus 600 squared, and our rate is 4. Okay, now the equation is going to start getting ugly, but up until this point, um, without having to do the algebra that's coming up, we're just looking at what is our distance on the sidewalk, so the 6,000 minus this x bit over the 6, because that's our rate on the sidewalk, and then we've got this light blue triangle where we're looking at the hypotenuse being the distance where she's walking on the grass. And one side of the triangle is the x that we previously defined. And the other leg of the triangle is the 600 that's given to us as the width of the park. So we get her, her distance going across the park as being x squared plus 600 squared. And we'll take the square root of that whole thing. Now it's possible, again, just going back a little bit, it's possible that x could be the entire 2,000, in which case she would only be going across the park, and, and we'd have this distance. It's also possible that x could be 0, and she walks 2,000 feet on the sidewalk, and then 600 feet on the grass. That's another possibility. So x could be anywhere x could be anything greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2,000.
So now let's get into the algebra of this. So I know that if I want to maximize or minimize this, I'm going to need to take a derivative. Well, I want this in the easiest form that I can get to take a derivative, so I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to get me in a spot so that I can take that derivative. So I'm going to divide by 2,000 by 6, and then I'm going to have minus 1 sixth of x. So I'm just distributing that 6 into both of these terms. And then I'm going to have 1 fourth of the square root. Well, I don't have a, a shortcut for square root, but I do if I change the notation to raising this to the 1 half power. So now I'm in a position to find a derivative. So when I take the derivative, this is 0. This is negative 1 sixth. And then 1 half times 1 fourth. I'll write it out for you. And then x squared plus 600 squared. That's my u. To the 1 half minus 1 gives me a negative 1 half. And then my du is 2x. Well, I'm going to need to get this set equal to zero. So before I do that, let's tidy it up so that the algebra will be a little bit easier. So I'm going to have t prime, my derivative, is equal to negative one sixth plus, and I've got a two on the bottom, I've got a two on the top. So I'm going to have an x on the top from here. I'm going to have this 4 on the bottom, and this is a negative exponent, so it's going to go back down to the bottom, and that 1 half power, I'm going to put it back into the radical because it's just a more usable form. Now, there will be some people who will be tempted to say the square root of two things squared. Well, maybe I can get rid of those squares, but remember, I can only do those that if those two things are multiplied, not if they're added together. So I want to set this equal to 0. And when I do, I've got 0 equals negative 1 sixth plus x over 4 square root. I'll add the 1 sixth to each side. And now I can cross multiply. So I've got 6x equals 1 times 4 square root. And just to get my numbers a little bit smaller, so I, I, mean, I don't have to do this, but I'll divide each side by 2 just to make the, the numbers more manageable. So I've got 3x equals 2 square root, just dividing each side by 2. And then I need to get rid of that radical. So in order to get rid of the radical, I'm going to square each side. And I'll have 9x squared. Remember to square both the constant and the variable. And then I'm going to have 4. And then the square root squared gives me just what's underneath. So I've got x squared. And that 600 squared, let's go ahead and, and multiply that. So I've, I've got 36 and four zeros. So 360,000. So this is the algebra still. We're, we're, we're done with our calculus part, or we're, we're going to get back to our calculus part. So I've got 9x squared equals 4x squared plus 1440 zero. And then let's subtract that 4x squared. So I've got 5x squared, subtracting that from each side, equals that 1,440,000. Divide by 5, and I have got x squared equals 288,000. And then I want the x by itself, not an x squared. So when I take the square root, I'd usually have to take plus or minus, but because x is a distance, I'll just take a positive. 
and I get 536.66. So my distance on the sidewalk is going to be the 2,000 minus that 536.66, which is 1463, so I'm rounding that feet. And my distance on the grass is, and this was a 2,000 and not a 200, sorry, 2,000. My distance on the grass is x squared plus 600 squared. So if I put this in the square and add the 600 and square that, take the square root of the whole thing, I get 805 feet. Okay, so now we've got to go back and we've got to figure out, well, what is her time in total? So the time on the sidewalk, a lot of pieces here, but our, my time on the sidewalk is going to be the distance, that 1463 feet, divided by her rate on the sidewalk, which is 6 feet per second, which is 243.8 seconds, but I want it in minutes. So I'm going to have, say that 60 seconds is the same as one minute. So that gives me 4.06 minutes. All right, so the sidewalk part is less than seven minutes. That's good. Now we need to get her across the grass. So her time on the grass is going to be her distance, which is that 805 feet, divided by her rate on the grass, which was the four feet per second, is 201, uh, and I can't read my writing here, I think it's 25 seconds, times 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. So that's 3.35 minutes. And if I add those together, Time total is 4.06 minutes plus 3.35 minutes. Oh, this is looking grim because I've already got seven minutes there. I've got 7.41 minutes. So she misses the bus. So lesson learned here is that she's she's got to bribe the bus driver to wait for her every day, or she's got to get up a little bit earlier. So a long way to find out that, that she didn't leave herself enough time. If she's only got seven minutes, she's going to have to wait for another bus or know that she's going to be late for wherever she's going to get to. Um, quick recap, though, is I looked at my extremes first. I wanted to know what would happen if she just stayed on the sidewalk. So that is an extreme. What would happen if she just stayed on the grass? Another extreme. But over here, I said, what if she did a combination of the two? So I wanted to minimize her time. And in doing that, said, I'm only going to go part way across, and I had to define this bit as being a variable x. Um, as we pointed out in class before, if I need to put a variable somewhere, either calling this x and this 2000 minus x, or vice versa, if I can make my variable the side of a triangle that I might be needing to use later, that's going to be easier. If I had called this x, then I would have had this be my 2,000 minus x, which would have made my Pythagorean theorem harder. So there's the deal. Interesting application. Hope you thought it was fun.